All right. So today we have a very special guest on the Private Practice Elevation podcast, and that is Steve Kafari, who um, we have been working together for now over around two years. And so I think that, yeah, I think that Steve's got really just a, a great story, a great mind uh, for marketing and private practice. And and I think that folks are just really going to learn a lot from the things that you've learned along the way working together. So before we kind of dive into, um, you know, we talk a lot about SEO, a lot about just marketing and visibility for your private practice. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more about uh, who you are, where you are, and you know w- what you do? Okay, well, let's see. I've been married 30 years. Um, I'm a college professor at Vanguard University of Psychology. I've been doing that for 22 years. And I've been a marriage and family therapist for about 22 years. I'm also a licensed minister. And I have two, well, I want to say young boys, but they're grown men now. They're 21 and 23. So I'm still amazed at how fast they grow up. (laughs) So, you know, and basically my main focus is on two crowds. One is um, married couples, and the other was parents with neurodiverse children and just the challenges they face, whether it's ADD, dyslexia, things like that. Awesome. And um, let's kind of get into, I'm so excited to kind of chat about this stuff and kind of have, even like for myself to have this conversation kind of recorded and in one place. Um, Mm -hmm. Because like I said, you know, we've been working together for about two years. And so, you know, when when you first reached out uh, to me and to private practice elevation, um, you know, it was clear that you, you had a vision for kind of what you wanted to do and you wanted to invest in, in a new website, but also knowing that this new website was also going to have a high emphasis on, on SEO. So why don't you kind of take us back to that time? You know, why did you decide to create, this was a brand new website. Um, this wasn't like a redesign of another website. It was a new practice website, correct? Right. All right yeah. 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 So why did you decide to invest in that new website, you know, in your, in your career and where you're at? And why did you also have that high emphasis on SEO as well? Well, um, I'll be flat out honest with you. I worked at an organization for upwards of 20 years and I relied on them to get me clients, uh, about yeah, 20 years, seven years there for 22. And I didn't realize that, um, I got used to, you know, them giving me the clients. And it was mm-hmm. a place where we did not take insurance. And then, make a long story short, I decided I wanted to go into private practice. And the moment I decided I wanted to go into private practice, I had to face all of the normal fears that go with, how am I going to get clients? And right. I'm a big fan of Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And um, I basically began with the end in mind and said to myself, you know what? I want to have a private practice that I take out-of-pocket clients only. I don't want to deal with insurance because I cannot stand working with insurance companies. Mm-hmm. They are not nice people. <laughs> so, and they use, you know, they just, well, I don't want to get into that. So, <laughs> you know, which it, it elicited all kinds of worries, concerns, and fears. Yeah. And um, I knew I needed a website because, you know, um, the moment I hang my hat on an office building in Tustin, California, where I work, um, it wasn't like there's going to be a line to see Steve Kafar because they don't know me from anybody. Right. So I had to give people compelling reasons outside of, you know, doing good therapy all those years and my clients referring um, to make up that gap, which was quite frankly terrifying at some levels. So yeah. I wanted to try, I'm a big fan of trying smart and not hard. Trying hard is doing a lot of or free um, talks and you know, yelling at society and getting on Instagram and, hey, look at me, look (laughs) at me. And um, I didn't want to do the paid ad stuff because that can, you can burn, your burn rate goes way up high. You can spend a lot of money, which I'm not suggesting it's a bad thing. I just, I didn't want to do it because I had, I didn't have the greatest of success doing that at an earlier stage, five or six years prior. So um, I went out looking for um, a web guy and one of my good friends, who's a therapist, who used to be the um, webmaster at Vanguard University, um, he said, "Steve, I'm full," and um, he didn't know he didn't have a good referral for me. And so I went looking around, and I ran into um, Dan, and <laughs> um, came across your website, and I realized that 
in as much as I'm trying to speak to a specific audience, I wanted someone doing SEO that spoke to a specific audience because I didn't want to be, you know, yeah, we can, I do SEO for plumbers and I do SEO for electricians right. and sure, I can do SEO for you. I can do that because, you know, this is kind of a trite statement, but there's riches and niches. And there's something to say about knowing your audience, um, whether you're a speaker, a person doing SEO or whatever. So yeah, that's really what attracted. And you, you know, um, you were a guide with a plan, truth be told. And um, I really value um, working with experts. And I mean that sincerely because I tell my clients this all the time. Um, you know, if you have, if, if you have a brain tumor, do you want to go to a general practitioner or a, you know, a well-researched neurosurgeon who's been doing it for 20 years, who, you know, all of his community or her community looks at them for expertise. Right. So I just knew that, but I, you know, like a lot of people, I didn't want to pay the money for that either. And then it really was that, and I'm a psychotherapist and here I am telling my clients, you know, your biggest challenge is not out there. It's the person you see, you see staring back at you in the mirror and <laughs> I had to start practicing what I preach. And so, <laughs> you know, I had to recognize that my biggest fear is not out there. It's, you know, am I worth investing in? Mm. And can I really put my money where my mouth is? And, you know, it's amazing when you can say that all day long until you start pulling money out of your pocket and investing in yourself. Yeah. So, you know, that's really what attracted me because, you know, some of the podcasts that you have, um, and some of the strategies that you had really helped me recognize that, okay, this guy has a clear plan and he's basically saying, you can do it on your own. I can show you how to do it. But I thought, I don't want to pay the real price of the learning curve and mm -hmm. make all the normal, honest mistakes. Like I don't do my taxes because I don't want to get audited. I've had a tax man for, you know, my whole career. I don't, I don't change my oil because I don't want to learn how to do that and make a mistake. One of my best friends tells me I'm cheap. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm stupid because I, I go and get my oil changed. But I laugh because, you know, he changed his oil in a couple of months ago. I think I told you this, Dan, where he, um, you know, drains the oil in his car, puts it in the front seat to go deposit at the right place, and then makes a hard turn and spills oil all over the inside of his brand new car. So uh, in his efforts to save money, he spent $3,000 <laughs> making up the mess and i said well who's the idiot now <laughs> right yeah I, I wouldn't say that to most people but to my best friend i can mess with him so <laughs> you know i i i, I have to really rec reconcile this idea of you know what makes financial sense doesn't always make emotional sense what well, makes emotional yeah. sense doesn't always make financial sense so for me what attracted to you was you know welding both of them together and realizing that you know if I face my fears, it actually does make not just financial, but emotional sense. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, it's a really good point because like you, you certainly can, you can certainly learn to do SEO and, and I certainly teach folks how to do SEO. Um, but that's not always for everybody. And a lot of the times uh, I think that sometimes people need to recognize, well, what stage are you at in your practice? Like there might be a time where, yeah, I can invest plenty of time and learn this stuff, but there's also sort of that tipping point where you're like, no, I'm going to invest in someone who already has that plan in place and who has the experience. Um, but thank you for the kind words. Um, and, uh, you know, if, to be honest, it's weird when someone says you're, you're an expert in this. Um, and I'd say, you know, to that, it, it, I just really enjoyed serving this community, you know, and serving therapists and and just because of my wife's story and, and her practice, it made total sense for me to just learn how to best serve therapists in private practice. Um, and so, yeah, there is some expertise that just comes from just doing the work, you know, year after year, month after month with, uh, with other therapists. And so, you know, when it comes to investing in SEO for us and for me and kind of what I, I love to bring to the table is that experience of, well, well, we did this on Steve's website, you're in a similar place. So we can now sort of apply similar strategies. Um, and also even beyond SEO, you know, you mentioned, um, uh, building a story brand that you, you said, I'm a, I'm a guide with a plan. And that's what that's from. People have heard me on the podcast, talk about Donald Miller and that book. Um, so that kind of stuff comes out too, of like, how do we, how do we 
find your ideal clients and how do we position you as the guide to those ideal clients? So, you know, there, there is something to be said about investing in someone who is really focused on, um, on private practice. So thank well, let you me for throw that. a little curve to you on that too. That, yeah. Um, you know, as a college professor and a marriage and family therapist, um, I've, I've had to wrestle with this idea of expertise and I'll just say it this way, that if you're really thinking about SEO, you know, Let's remember that people like Dan see things that you can't see on your best day. I mean, when my clients walk into my office, I can see things that they are completely blind to because they just right. don't have that understanding. And, you know, and that's what, that's what creates value. You know, I teach developmental psychology. And while they're telling me that parents are telling me that my child is making really poor choices, you know, I'm able to very graciously say, well, what if that's not fully accurate? What do you mean? Well, what if there's automated systems in your son's brain that are just taking over? What mm -hmm. if this is very age appropriate and developmentally right on schedule? And they just look at me like, huh? I go, I'm not all suggesting you're wrong. I'm just suggesting there's more to the story here. Yeah. While your child is, in your views, disrespecting you, what if by chance that your that's your son's desperate attempt to please understand me? And they just look at me like, oh my goodness, I never thought about that. And the reason why I say that is because you know, I've had that experience with you numerous times because you see things I can't see because reading the dashboards that we talk about, you know, and tracking the numbers, it's like Greek to me. <laughs> and to learn that stuff, I still don't know what it fully means. And so mm. I have to trust and rely on you. And then numerous times I'll say to you, what does all that mean? And does that mean that we need to stop this, add this, subtract this? What do we do here? Because mm -hmm. numbers tell us a story, but I don't know what yeah. the numbers mean um, when it comes to that kind of stuff. So, you know, that part um, to me is what makes someone like yourself invaluable to the point where I have to be humble enough to admit that I don't want to learn it. I don't know how it's like Greek to me. So to me, this is the price I pay for running my private practice just like i pay a tax man i don't want to learn all that stuff the 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 the, the, the um, irs code changes every year they are legally obligated to stay up to date with it i'm not i'm like look here's my numbers mm -hmm. have a good time <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. just make sure i don't just make sure i get a return every year and we do that every year i'm like i want a little bit something even if it's a hundred bucks i want money back from uncle sam <laughs> right yeah. And, you know, to that point too, like kind of from this side of the table too, like you've just been so fantastic to work with because you kind of come at it in that humble way. And you, you help me realize things that I do gloss over because I see what the numbers do, or I take it for granted. And, and you're, you know, you're asking me the questions. And for me as sort of the service provider or coach or whatever you call it, it's like, oh yeah, that wasn't exactly clear. So like, you know, you have helped us at private practice elevation make our seo processes better and how we report better you know and so that's really just been the benefit of working together for about two years now and just the the um the feedback loop that we've kind of created between us um has been great so thank you for that and the contribution to all the other clients that we serve <laughs> And I want to try to get, I want to start to get into a little bit about, you know, like I mentioned, you, we've been kind of at this for almost like two years, maybe probably mm -hmm. about two years, you know, when you were talking like developing the website and launching it and now getting into SEO. Um, and you, you decided early on to invest in, in our gold package of SEO, which is our highest tier. You know, it's, 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 it's not pennies, you know, it's a lot. So I'm just curious what made Bye. you. <laughs> What's that? Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, what what made you really stay the course and continue, you know, doing that for as long as you did? Because, you know, to be honest, a lot of people we work with, we we have a few clients that we've worked with for a few years on SEO, not at the level that we've worked at with you, but you know, most people maybe they they come on for a few months and they try it out, um, but SEO is certainly a long term strategy and does take time. So what what helped you to really stay the course and continue working on that SEO? Um, sorry, I, uh, I'm an impasse, so I get pretty emotional about this stuff. Um, I, uh, I learned a long time ago that 
the importance of investing in yourself. Let me hear from Let me give you just a brief example. When I was in my 20s, I was a professional jockey. I rode races for 10 years of my life. And all I ever wanted to do was ride at Santa Anita Racetrack. And I was in Kentucky. I was a leading apprentice in the state of Kentucky in 1983. And to make a long story short, um, I had six months of success. I said to my agent, I want to go ride in California. He said, you're out of your mind. You'll never make it. Make a long story short, I went out to California and they were right, I failed. But what I learned was I didn't fail. I learned how to not listen to everybody else. Mm -hmm. I learned how to not. I learned how to not let fear run my life. Yeah. And I didn't realize how gigantically emotionally expensive that is and how mm -hmm. hard it is to not let fear. I mean, because we all have that self critic, that doubt. I yeah. love my wife dearly, but, you know, she's like, I don't want you to spend that kind of money. And I'm like, I'm sorry that that's not up for negotiation. I love you, but this is my business. And I, you know, um, two people can't ride one horse. I'm sorry, but. Um, this isn't up for negotiation. And I said, I just, I just need you to trust. And that wasn't easy for her. Yeah. Well, I tracked my numbers and, you know, those numbers prove that my decision was correct because my return on investment has been multiple. So what I've learned is that successful people invest in themselves in their education. And I learned that from a guy named Jim Rohn at a very young age. He's a motivational speaker for Tony Robbins. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just true, but I still bump into how how much that statement forces me to face my fears every day. And Dan, I've even said to you there's been a couple of times along the way where I wanted to say, you know, I think I'm I think we've achieved our goal. I want to I want to stop that. Mm -hmm. But my own my own sense of self is like, wait a minute, no, Steve, are you worth this? There's still a learning curve. Um, so I just want to throw out the picture that don't let fear run it, run it because remember I did the, the, I did the crazy stuff, start your practice and taking cash only clients from the get go. I've yeah. never taken insurance once. And that's not because I'm anybody special. I have some magic wand or I'm super duper smart. Um, I would argue that I could credit that to my faith in God, but also uh, my faith in myself mm -hmm. and not letting fear run the show and every time those numbers come up and you know there's that fear of well can you really afford this and i would say to myself i can't afford not to do it mm -hmm. wow. you know yeah. um there's a point where you have to find the courage to excuse my french you gotta have the balls to look fear in the eye <laughs> <laughs> i mean there's the yeah. race rider in me mm -hmm. uh, yeah. sometimes you just you know Sometimes you have to make a way when there seems like there is no way. And that means yeah. telling your fears to sit down, shut up, and quit talking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's not easy to do. No, it's not. Well, thank you for sharing that story. I didn't I didn't know that about you that you're you were a jockey. Wow. That's yeah. That's really yeah, that's really powerful stuff because fear, I mean, I have my own my own tango with fear. And we as, all a, do. as a business owner, that's probably one of the most surprising things that I've faced uh, as an entrepreneur leader, you know, is just, you don't, you don't realize how much fear can come at you to, and how it impacts your decisions. And I, I, I constantly try to remind myself like, well, what would I do in this situation if I couldn't fail, you know, and that kind of helps clear my mind, helps me stay in that creative zone. Um, but it is always, it's always a dance. It's always something that we have to have to wrestle with. Um, so thank you for, for sharing that. Oh, well, thank you for helping me learn this process because it's been its own person. You know, the irony is even though it's been SEO, it's been actually a journey of personal development and yeah, fear management, right. truth be told, fear management. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, I want to get a little bit, not technical, but maybe like into some of the things that you learned, you know, specific 
to SEO? Um, and really like what, what were some of the challenges that you faced or, you know, we faced together? I've certainly got ideas here, but I'm, I'm curious to hear your answer. Like what were some of the challenges you faced as we got into content, SEO, getting more visibility for your practice? Well, um, you know, that book you recommended, um, Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller mm -hmm. was a game changer. I have studied um, marketing for years, but he just took the, I guess what really made the most sense to me is making sure that my website is simple, obvious, and very, very, very strategic. In other words, making sure that my website isn't just a really great library that looks beautiful because that's a waste of time and money, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I want a website that converts shoppers to customers, period. I don't really, let me just be a little bit strategic. I can care less about people looking on my website and thinking, oh, it's really beautiful and I really love your article. I'm like, if you don't want to be my client, then I've not achieved my goal. Yeah. So for me, you know, like when I would get on a horse's back, I went out there for one reason, to win. That was it. There was no mm -hmm. other thing. Finishing yeah. second was a waste of time <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, I'd be in front for a mile straight and get beat, uh, you know, a 16th of an inch at the wire. And that was the difference between winning a $250,000 race and getting a $250 jock mount. That mm -hmm. was a big difference. Yeah. Okay. So I wanted a website to convert shoppers to customers. And to me, um, it drove me down to, and this is one of my bullet points, is not just beginning with the end in mind, but also knowing your audience. So. Yeah. I'll be honest, um, I spent, you know, I'm a nerdy college professor and I understand the, the real value of a purpose statement. So I spent several, several hours on not just reading that book, but clarifying my message into one sentence and, you know, literally clarifying my message into a sentence that I can't even remember now. It's written down. But the point being is... Um, and it's all stapled all over my website. And I've literally had clients call me and say, the reason why I, because I asked my interview, I'm like, okay, so why, do, why are you choosing me? Well, you know, you really said that you're going to help me reduce those destructive conversations and develop, you know, a lifetime of safety and botanism. And it was very close to that message, but the point being, or helping busy parents calm the chaos, raise emotionally intelligent children and nurture a family that thr thrives. So, you know, those kinds of statements really speak to the heart and they really grip the audience. So to me, um, before we, Dan, before you and I really even built the website, I had to get real crystal clear on who's my audience and I'm a nerd. Yeah. So, you know, in my mind, you know, I know how much they make. I know what they're, they're, you know, I named the, because the, the female is typically the one that calls. So her name's Amanda. She makes $150,000 a year. Mm -hmm. She is her own entrepreneur. Um, she drives a Volvo. She <laughs> makes sure that um, safety is a big deal for her kids. And she wants to help her kids, you know, grow up into independent young people who thrive. And she loves her husband. And she's really worried about divorce and wants a better marriage kind of yeah. stuff. So I have to speak to those kinds of hot buttons and every every word I put on the website matters. And there's where SEO comes into it. What keywords are we using to catch that audience? Because with if we begin with the end in mind, Dan and I have worked this out to where now 90% of the time the clients when I call them or when they call me, they don't even ask me about insurance because we have honed it so much to where they're like, I said, so do you have any questions? Because I don't even talk to them about my fees. I just say, so it sounds like you want to meet. Do you have any questions? Which is really code for you concerned about price. Because if you're not, I'm certainly not going to bring it up. Right. You know? So yeah. they're like, no, let's just meet. I'm like, okay. So now you're aware that, you know, I've had my insurance discussion. Like, okay, so, you know, I don't work within network. Um, I, I, I can give you a super bill if you want to work with it. Oh, let's not worry about that. So I've honed it. We've honed it in such a way that, most of the time, the clients that I get now, they don't even ask me about fees. Yeah. They just don't. Yeah. That's fantastic. And, and I do want to also note just for people listening that, you know, like you said, you, you spent that time really clarifying your message and who you speak to, but you also wrote the content for your for your website, you know, for those service pages. Um, and so that's just kind of encouragement for people who are also writing their own content. And, you know, to be honest, when we first launched the website, I thought, 
like, wow, this, this is going to take a, a long time to get this ranking because it wasn't a lot of content. Cause like you said, you wanted your website to be clear and simple. And sometimes that's the big challenge when it comes to SEO is because you don't have enough content on the page, but you know, we were still able to, to, uh, expand that content a little bit. And we, we did our SEO base camp work where we add some FAQs and kind of expand that out a little bit. Um, but it's still, it's sort of a really nice marriage of that SEO and then also just that clarity uh of message there so i think that that's well, really things. really helped keep it simple keep it obvious that means you, every word on the website you don't want your clients having any sense of hesitation or confusion so yeah i had numerous people read it i ran it through chat gbt you know to just say what would you change i did not at all use chat gbt in the content that's all my stuff but the point being is Really, because words, if, if there's one thing I've learned from marketing all these years, words matter. I mean, yeah. can I tell, I want to tell a brief story. Um, I spoke at the Association of Christian Schools International in Anaheim, okay? I don't have a book. The guy in one room and the guy in the other room both were published authors with nine books apiece. I was just this little guy, just want to make a presentation. Um, my title of my talk was, what 99 out of 100 parents don't, not what 99 out of 100 teachers don't know about classroom management. I filled the room with 150 people every time I did it. And the guys next to me were, had 15 to 30 people. <laughs> and the only, the only reason why it wasn't, I wasn't anybody special. Nobody knew me. It's because I had a really crystal clear hook to yeah. my audience. What do 99 out of 100 teachers what do they not know about classroom management? I mean, they came in by the groves. That's great. So words matter. They just yeah. matter. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got just, I really just appreciate just like how you kind of come at things. Just very, very curious and very, you know, teachable uh, to find out, like you said, like you, I know you use chat GPT, like you're working on a blog post. What are five titles? Like, how can I rework this title to make it really enticing like really clear and i think that that stuff really helps people go from the google search results to actually clicking on your website you know um and other things too you know i, I want to mention early on just because this comes up so much with other people that we talk to you know we optimized your website when we first launched it you know you are in tustin which is in orange county california so um this is sort of the learning process of SEO. We optimize the website for Orange County, thinking it's a bigger pool. The the numbers of people searching couples therapy in Orange County, a lot more numbers. So we did that. And, you know, we let that sort of marinate for a little while for, you know, a few weeks or maybe a month or two. And then I think we realized that we weren't reaching the right people that we weren't, you weren't getting as many calls as we wanted to see happen. Um, and then, so just kind of through our, our processing coaching together, you know, you let me know, well, I think people aren't really going to drive from, I don't know what, what all the other cities well, they are. Told me that. They yeah. told me that. And so more and more, I've come to realize that, well, not only does my website need to be simple, obvious and strategic, but truth be told, Therapy needs to be simple and convenient. Like I have a client right now yeah. that I'm doing couples therapy and she's wanting to do individual work. And she literally found a therapist around the corner because she lives in Tustin. Yeah. And because she also sees the value of, I don't want to get stuck in traffic. I don't want to show up to my therapist's office panting yeah. because I just spent 45 minutes in traffic and, you know, I'm feeling road rage when I didn't really even come to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And that, I mean, that just goes to prove sort of like the real life versus the whole, like we try to get very strategic, you know, and honestly, I tried to be very strategic, but at the end of the day, it's not really about the quantity. It's about the quality of people. And so now you keep telling me every time you pick up the phone, people are like, oh, I know exactly where that is. Yeah. Or I live so close to there. And so, you know, we re-optimized the website to focus on Tustin. Um, and we really learned the lesson of that, you know, Google really knows where you're located. Your Google business profile is Tustin. So let's make the website all about Tustin. Uh, Google just knows where people are located when they're searching. And so now the people who are showing up to the website, like you said, they're ready to go and they know where you're located because they could see the map and they're, you know, it's not like somebody from Santa Monica or whatever was like, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to drive there. 
So it's just been really fun, fun process. Well, let me add another reason why I'm just kind of chuckling. I'm learning something about myself as we talk, Dan. One of the reasons why I stick with Dan is I hate to lose. So when it comes to Google (laughs) search, I don't want to be second or third. It's like, that's the job for you again. Like, no, dog on it. I want to be the number one person. You know, I just, I hate losing. (laughs) (laughs) So there's a part of me that I still do it to be competitive because um, I'll say it this way. I went to a trainer's barn when I was 22 and my best friend was the leading rider of the racetrack. And the trainer asked me and him a very simple question. He said, why should I ride you on my horse? And I was like, oh, oh man. And that jockey put his arm around me, kissed me on the cheek, being very sarcastic and said, why have the rest when you can have the best? And I was like, <laughs> oh my goodness. The reason why I say that is I'm not out there telling everybody, you know, why have the rest when you can have the best of the therapist. But he was very competitive. And there Mm -hmm. are ways to ethically compete. And if, you know, and we all know intuitively that people typically are very lazy. They're in a hurry. So once they get past the sponsored ads, they're going to click on the the first person. They're not going to go to page two. So if you want a private practice that thrives, you better be competitive. Yeah. Or I'll, if, if you were a client of mine, I would very politely say, why are you surprised? My dad said that to me when I was not leading right. I was complaining. He goes, well, why are you surprised? I'm like, what? And I was offended that he would say that. He said, well, what's the difference between what you do and what they do? I go, I don't know. He goes, that's the problem. Can I tell you what the leading writer does? I go, what's that? He goes, they work seven days a week. They get up at four o'clock in the morning and they talk to everybody. They, you know, and they use their hand, they shake hands. Well, I hung up on him at 20 years old, got mad, didn't <laughs> talk to him for a month and did what he said. And lo and behold, three months later, I was leading apprentice of Kentucky. Wow. Tough so, love. <laughs> yeah. There's a point yeah. where, you know, I, it's, it's, it's really about pushing yourself and not just yeah. having a website and going, well, I guess God's not, this is not God's will for my, uh, mm-hmm. wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing with SEO, you know, there's always so much that you can do. And so I think some people, they, they don't go all in, like you have clearly gone all in and, you know, we're definitely seeing the results of that. Well, let me say it this way. If you don't go in, go all in, it's like being kind of pregnant. There's no such thing as kind (laughs) of pregnant. Okay. So if you're going to be a therapist and you want a private practice, you have to live, eat, sleep, and breathe. But if you're going to dabble in psychotherapy, um, I would never want to see you as a as a therapist. If, mm-hmm. if I was to go to you and it would just show up in the way you know, just like just like a plumber. I don't want a plumber who dabbles in plumbing. I want someone who knows yeah. their stuff because I've got a I've got a a, a cracked slab. I want him to fix it, not just mm-hmm. go. I think I have an idea of what's going on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some tough love from Steve right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you tell us like as we kind of start to wrap up our conversation here? Why don't you tell me? Um, Tell us a few things that you you really want other private practice other private practice owners to know when considering investing in SEO for their business. Um, well, we already talked about it's really a journey of personal development, but let's suggest yeah. that you take the risk. Um, good for you. You should be proud of yourself, but it's not easy. You've already separated yourself from some of the crowd. Um, it's learning to really get comfortable with that fear. Um, but if I could say a couple of things to help your fears, it's know your numbers. Let me say that again. You want to know your numbers. In other words, you cannot manage what you don't measure. You know, like mm-hmm. I tell my students, that, you know, one of their target behaviors is, well, I want to save more money. I'm like, or I want to lose more weight. That, that doesn't tell me anything. But if you say, I want to lose 10 pounds in the next 10 weeks, now we can track that. We can measure that. Yeah. We can manage that. If you want to, you know, save money. Um, I can't track that, but if you want to, at the end of the semester, have $500 in savings and every week put $5 away or something like that, now we can track that. So it's important to know, you know, to make things observable, trackable, and you can compare the there and then and the here and now. So you can really get a sense of how are we doing? Because numbers don't lie. You know, Dan and I can say to ourselves, we're doing great, but the numbers tell the story. The numbers will tell you how you're really doing. Right. Um, So what I've done, is um, track my phone calls and my emails from each entity. So I have a separate phone number. So 
you know, this is the behavior modifier in me, but you can't, tr you know, you can't manage what you can't measure and you've got to make it observable, trackable, and comparable. Um, so I have separate emails off my website versus just my, you know, reaching out to people. I have a separate phone number, which is more expensive. I go through uh, Ring Central so mm -hmm. that everybody doesn't just call my mobile phone and it blows up. Mm -hmm. um, but by doing that now, I have one phone number that's dedicated on the website. So any phone calls that come in off that number, I absolutely know the only reason why they called that number is because SEO work. That's it. Yeah, that's great. That's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just like there's a, a, a dedicated email. When I get that email, comes in, I know that's from the website. Mm -hmm. And then I mark that in my spreadsheet. And not only that, so it's not just tracking your phone calls. It's making sure that you track your own conversion rate. In other words, okay, last month I got you know, 15 phone calls, how many of those phone calls turned into clients that I saw at least not one time, but three times. Yeah. So that, and then that forces me to look at how am I interacting? Because Don, you and I have talked about the onboarding process is a big deal. Okay. So, you know, just getting them to actually go on the website and make a phone call and reach out and send an email. That's part of the onboarding process. So, I track my weekly average appointments. Um, I track my average fee so that all of that stuff tells me a story of how I'm doing and how the SEO is working because that plays a very intricate role. Every time you and I speak every month, um, you know, I'll say, okay, so last month, here's how many phone calls I received. And sometimes I've told you, but I know how many of those phone calls I turned into clients. Right. And then I ask myself, what's missing? Mm -hmm. Even in SEO, you know, like how can we even hone it more? Yeah. to that particular audience. What kinds of buzzwords do we need to use? Because one thing I have learned is that um, SEO words shift and change like the weather too throughout, throughout the month, throughout the season. This month yeah. they're searching for this. This month there's, you know, one month they might be searching for, you know, a therapist. Next one is a marriage counselor mm -hmm. or mental health counselor. Yeah. I just, it's very different. So it's in, in, it, you know, I found that SEO is not very concrete. It's, it's a little bit like the weather. It does shift and change. Yeah. Now there's weather in California, but it's still shifting and changing and there's average weather and there's unseasonable weather. So it's important to know that that's part of investing in it. That, um, yeah. Dan, I guess metaphorically, you're a little bit like a weatherman, you know, that you <laughs> have to try to predict the weather, but sometimes the weather changes. It just does. Things, yeah. things change. Yeah. And yeah. you've got to be able to adapt, which means my website's got to be able to adapt. Yeah. And what we like focus on one month, we might not focus on the next month because of that, because we see uh, more people are showing up to, you know, this blog post really resonated or, or we're starting to see more traction on this landing page. So let's create more blogs related to it and connect those together. It shifts, it changes all the time. I'll tell you that specific thing right there was boom for me because when we start because when we first started one of my blog posts was the number one and then four or five months later that blog post wasn't number one it was a different blog post and suddenly I saw a giant difference and so I built a couple more blog posts off of that same idea mm -hmm. and now yep. I'm going to be doing um, a whole series on video you know here just in in, in the future so just to show you people that, you know, when you track your numbers, it's not just those numbers tell you a story and they actually help you pivot. They help, help you become flexible. They actually teach you what's excessive, what's deficient, what's yeah. lacking, all that kind of stuff. So it's interesting how the numbers kind of become their own persona and tell you, hey, you need to go this direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and so there's where to me, you know, I wouldn't know how to find which, which, which blog post is the best one. Um, but talking to you about that and you looking at the crunching and the numbers like, okay, there it is right there. Okay. That's the direction we need to go. And I yeah. now can do that with confidence and certainty. Right. Awesome. So that's a great point. Know your numbers track as much as you can track really uh, is super helpful. Is there anything else that you want folks to know before we land this plane? Um, you know, what I'll do is I'll give, um, I'll send you a blank template of the um, spreadsheet that I use with the conversion tables in it to where at least. Yeah, know, that'd be great. They want, they could, it's very simple. It's almost boring, but you know, sometimes boring mm -hmm. is prolific. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, I love a good spreadsheet. I've got tons in my own business, so we'll we'll link that up in the show notes for sure. Well, I just want to say just a huge thank you, Steve. Um, I really appreciate you. It's been just amazing working with you over these last few years. Um, I appreciate the way that you come at this stuff and you just got a, a great mind and it's just been really great. And as I said, like you have really helped me hone our process and learn so much uh, working together, you know, and just this, this long-term journey that we've been on to really find what works for your audience and, and reach them. Well, I want to say thank you because you've made a significant difference in what life looks like in my own living room because of your expertise. So, you know, um, you're worth your weight in gold, boss. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you.